Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're going to have a technical seminar covering the GM Hydromatic four-speed transmission used in the Silver Clouds and the early post-war cars. We're going to service it and we're going to take the valve body, the little control unit, apart and I'm going to discuss how it works. I'll, sh I'll do some air checks and I'll show you how things kind of work inside. Now we're going to pull the side cover off where the governor and the control valve assembly is situated. The throttle valve linkage, you have to take the dis disconnect the linkage from there. It's, uh, it's got a little cinch bolt and it's 560. <laughs> Are these pretty standard? Us, a lot of stuff is. They're a mix. They're a mix of British standard. The R type is much more British standard, pretty much all British standard. Um, but on any old car like this, you never know who's been working on it. So that should normally just slide right off. This one's a little tight. There we go. All right, and then this is the manual linkage part. And I don't know why. There we go. Now, watch your heads back there with the wheels. Now, here's reverse, it's locked. There it's not. See that? All right. And this has also a cinch bolt that's 7 16 and that'll slide off. Now both of these shafts coming out here are separate, but they've got, so you can't put it back in the wrong place. They've got little um, serrated teeth. Can you see that? The serrations? Uh, so you can only put it in one position. Because otherwise, that'd really get, be a nightmare to try to set this, all the linkages right. Now there are a bunch of bolts that hold this on. There are seven sixteenths. These usually have a little uh, aluminum or copper ceiling washers on them, because a lot of these holes go all the way through the case, and they will leak oil if you don't. Most of these don't leak oil, but these. Do you replace those? Only if they need it. As you can see, it's aluminum. Okay. I forget how many there are, about 10 or 12, something like that. This right here is your rear servo. That applies the rear band by pushing this lever out here, which I probably can't do manually. No, it's pretty hard, that rear one. Uh, and this one right here is your front servo, and that applies the front band. Uh, we're going to use air to do that so you can really see what happens. One thing I've seen a lot on these is one bolt here on this lower front corner. If you see this servo, it goes right up there and the hole goes all the way through. So one of these bolts should be shorter than the rest. If you put a long one in there, you can damage the servo, and I've seen that a lot. My problem is when I take something apart, I've always got bolts left over. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> yeah. So this can only go in that far. And this is a great way to check to see what size bolts you need. If you just take a screwdriver or something smaller, and then just take your finger up to where it goes, and then you know not to put a bolt longer than that in. Now, that's the only one you really got to worry about on this. The rest don't have an issue. Most of us would be laying out these bolts. <laughs> well, when we get to the valve, when we get to the valve body, and I start taking it apart, you do not want to mix up one spring or one valve in there. Um, and in Robert's defense here, he, he never complains about the amount unless he says, I don't think that's enough. <laughs> True story, right? <laughs> now he's covering himself. <laughs> but I do have to remind you to put things on the bill that you forget. Yeah, maybe I should get married again. I'd like to thank, well, we're in this little wall. I'd like to thank Steve Howard Farty for doing all these videos. You bet. Um, these videos are watched by people all over the world. I get oh shoot, emails, 
and phone calls from people. Let's see, it's ranging from South Africa, Europe, Eastern Europe, I just got an e email, South America, Australia, and all over the United States. People see, my, see these videos, enthusiasts who love cars, or even just regular shops that are looking for a resource to try to fix a problem car that they have. Um, we got two to go. See what I did right there? Don't try that at home. Notice I used the back of this. Uh, sometimes they just stick on there from their gasket. There's your side cover that has no gasket and has been put on with RTV, which works most of the time. Now we can see the guts there. Um, let's see, if you guys want to go over on that other side, you can see this is the governor I was talking about. And when you see how that's turning there? That's telling, that's telling the, the control valve how fast the car is going. So the faster you go, the more these things slide in and out, these pistons. There's a small one in here. Obviously the big one comes out the quickest, so that that's the first gear shift. That's usually what it tells. Uh, and then there's another one that goes out with higher speed. Going the right direction. No, we're going the wrong direction, so it would be this way. Um, your parking pawl, when you put it in park, where is it? Oh, here. You're going like this, and what happens is this, this lever goes up, and then it engages something into a big gear here, and it's locked. So when, uh, when you, the engine's running, there's a valve in here that disconnects it so it doesn't engage. So it's not in park. It's in reverse at that time. This is a control valve assembly. That's like the little brains for all of this stuff. Oops. So I think that's what we'll get off next. This pipe back here, I believe, yeah, this goes into a passage. In the back, there's a, it's like a metal cone and has a pissed in with like rubber seals and when you go into reverse this gets high pressure this is the highest pressure you're going to get out of the transmission is in reverse and it applies this cone so it works some other gears that changes the direction and it's essentially the same band and clutch application as first gear it just changes the direction but there's an additional gear reduction so reverse is your lowest lowest gear and then first gear is a little bit higher, and then when you get all the way up to fourth gear, it's one to one. Uh, and if you had a real solid connection here, you'd have actual, you wouldn't lose anything. But since the torque converter works off of uh, fluid pressure, you're gonna have slippage. That's why automatic transmissions generally get worse gas mileage than manual, because of that. Um, there's, there's a loss of torque. So now I'll get that thing off over there. Do. There's a this <laughs> this transmission has a number of tubes that all push into holes and to get the valve body off here there's one up front that connects passages they couldn't figure out how to connect inside so that little tube has to go back in when you put it together I know that because I've forgotten <laughs> 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 All right, there are four bolts that hold this valve body on here. They're quarter 28, 7 16 heads. One thing I forgot to mention, um, when you're taking this off, it's good to take a rag and try to wipe. Because a, lot, a lot of times there's just a buildup of garbage. This one's been off before, obviously, but it, when you pull that off, it's going to get into everything. Just got dripped. Yeah, this is probably just about the most sensitive part of the car to contamination. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 
in the beginning I, I said we're looking for smoking guns. And I'll tell you one was that worn out linkage. But I don't want to go this far without getting into this also. It's, uh, it's real common to have a sticky valve in here causing all kinds of grief. In a sticky valve, would you replace it or clean it? You, you clean it. It's, it's hard to buy parts for these. If you wanted to, you'd have to buy a whole valve body and it would be used. You can't buy new stuff for these. Is it GM interchangeable? Uh -uh. Not really. No, they're different looking. Everyone I've seen on an American car is totally different looking than this. I mean, this servo braking system came from uh, some French car. Hispano Suiza. Hispano Suiza. Um, I think it's a, and, and a lot of people say these brakes are horrible, da da da. That's only because they're not set up properly. Not, what do you mean, not set up properly? Well, they're, the adjustments are, or, you know, people that work on them don't know how to work on them. Okay. And, and, you know, I had a customer not long ago, and he's got a number of these cars, and he says, those brakes are, you know, hit or miss. I said, well, they shouldn't be. And, you know, the first thing I drove his car, his servo was wet. So a dry clutch cannot be wet. It won't do its grabbing. What causes that brake clutch in there to get wet? There is a seal. Transmission fluid? Yeah, transmission fluid will leak. There's a seal in here, a lip seal, mm -hmm. and it'll leak onto there. It's, they put this drain tube in there to try to prevent it from getting that far, but it, eventually it's just going to sling around there. and It gets that dry clutch wet. Mm -hmm.